Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Utica TV Overtime. I'm Jermaine Trotter. And my name is Karen Bush. We are so excited to be bringing you up to date on Utica athletics. Let's get things started with track championship. Hunter Logan capped off his spectacular season by representing Utica at the Division III Indoor Track and Field National Championship. Competing in his signature event of the shot put, he recorded a 16.24 meter throw to place fifth in the entire nation. This mark was his second best of the season. His incredible production all season long helped him earn All-American status. He has really been a superstar for the Pioneers this winter. He is the second men's All-American shot put athlete in school history, the first being school record holder Canoe Hedrum in 2019. Congratulations to Hunter Logan on all his achievements this indoor season. And congratulations to Coach James Lemix for the continued success of the track and field program. Make sure to stay up to date with the team as they head into the outdoor season this spring. Earlier this week, our men's lacrosse team faced off against the Knights of Medale College, ending in a victory with a score of 20 to one, and the Pioneers played a great game. In this non-conference game, 10 different players found a way to score. The first goal covered from freshman Connor Kazanazi, just over two minutes into the game and in with a total of four points. Sophomore John Spoto ended the game with a total of six goals of his own. Great job, Pioneers, and let's remember to support them throughout the season. The women's lacrosse team played their previously postponed matchup versus New Paul's during spring break this past Thursday. Ashley Gira kicked off the game with an unassisted goal to give the Pioneers the early lead. The game was a shootout with the Pioneers trading goals with the Hawks up until the fourth quarter. Emily Rossi and company caught fire and scoring six goals in the fourth to give the Pioneers the win. The Pioneers have had a lot of starts to the season and look to continue their tear versus Manhattan. Bill. The long-awaited Division III National Hockey Tournament got kicked off this past Saturday in which our Utica Pioneers took the Northeasterners of the University of New England. This contest was a defensive battle until the Northeasterners scored on a short-handed goal to make the lead one to nothing. Pioneers tallied 38 shots on goal, but sadly it wasn't good enough to give them a win. Utica was eliminated from the tournament, but their incredible season will be remembered by all. We all look forward to see how these men will bounce back looking into next season. After Saturday's game, we met with Coach Gary Heenan and team captain Dante Zapata to catch their reflection of the season. Hey everyone, we have Coach Gary Heenan for Dante Zapata. Uh, just really quickly guys, if you would, uh, just talk a little bit about the atmosphere today and the odd and um, obviously it didn't end up the way we wanted it to, but I'd say that was probably the loudest I heard it all season. So can you just talk a little bit about the fans and the atmosphere today? Well, the odds, the odd. I mean, it's, I mean, it's the best rank fan in the country for a reason. And they showed up. They had our, our backs. We needed some momentum. Place to get loud at times. We were carrying that momentum. But, uh, you know, it's a crazy game. It's, uh, I didn't think we were sharp in the first period. It seemed like we had played in a couple weeks. Halfway through the second, we turned it on. We started peppering them pretty good. How that puck doesn't go in, I don't know. Um, we may lose a game on a shorthand breakaway. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Um, the power play was, wasn't was our best. We had to have the number one scoring offense in the country. And power play in the country and doesn't doesn't produce. That's, that's pretty disappointing. Yeah, I know, uh, like Gary said, I think uh, you know, the odd, we have some of the best fans in, in the country um, for Division III, um, and they definitely came to show today. But, uh, you know, it comes down to scoring goals. And um, when you leave a goose egg on the board, there's, you can't win games. So we got to find a way. We didn't. Uh, Coach, what can you make of the graduate students that you've had come through your program in the last five years and the legacy that they leave behind you? 
Yeah, I mean, first I want to say, like you and E, I thought they, the difference, and one of the big difference for them is uh, they blocked a, a ton of shots. And uh, they were happy on pucks, 50 50 pucks. Uh, the goaltender was obviously unbelievable. So credit to those guys. Um, they came and battled, come away from a really hard place to play and win. Uh, we got a group of seniors, super seniors, that have obviously won some sort of championship all four or five years they've been here. Um, that's a real shitty way to lose and their career. We had, we felt we had a team that we wouldn't all uh, feel bad for those guys. Uh, they've given a lot to this this school and this program. Uh, not the way I wanted to see them finish their career. Structurally seemed like the neutral zone was a little difficult at times. The entries were a little tough. Yeah, I thought the gap control was really good. I, you know, I, I, I didn't think we were on our game. I thought our entries could have been, you know, we chip pucks in. I, I didn't think we were as, as nasty and as hard as we usually are. Um, I thought we had opportunities to cut back pucks and, and stop ups and create space. And uh, to their credit, uh, they took our space away. Um, we had plenty of looks. Look, we had plenty of looks. Plenty of great A chances. Their goalie was up to the task. And uh, you know, again, they blocked some great shots. And we missed the net when, when we could have fired. So to hold our, our talented group off the board is a credit to them. And, uh, you know, it'll be a long summer thinking about some of those looks. Dante, from the captain's role, how has this season been for you having the opportunity to lead this group? Well, I mean, it's, it's been a blessing to lead a, such a great group of guys that we have. Um, I mean, being in that position, uh, it's it's an honor, and you know, I wish nothing but the best for our our guys that are moving on next year. And uh, just it sucks that you know they had to go out this way. And um, like Gary said, I think we had the team to do it. And you and E, they, they played a hell of a game today. So um, credit to them. Coach, have you seen the, the goal that got waved off yet? Like a replay event? What did it look like to you? Yeah, we did. We just watched it. Uh, I mean, the ref's in great position. Uh, I think the goal judge, if it's if it's on the ice, uh, and it was, if it, crossed the, if it crossed the line, it was in the air. So that's what makes it so difficult. It's kind of just dangling right above the goal line, and the paddle comes up and swats it away. So, I mean, the, the fight and the compete in their goaltender was just awesome. Uh, is it conclusive? No, it's not. Uh, so, goalie was in, uh, Ralph Tay's credit was right. He was in great position. Did you feel the layoff? You said, you know, at least initially, it seemed like you had as much time between games as you did. The layoff was, uh, the layoff sucked. I mean, it was, it, uh, Two weeks is, is too long for us. Practices started getting uh, flat uh, this week. And, uh, I didn't think we had the same spirit we usually play with in that first period. Um, you know, we, we jump on teams in this building, and we didn't jump on this team uh, in the first period to let them stick around. some guys would love to have their their looks back um, you know we just yeah. our entries just weren't crisp um, you know the six minutes of power play we probably had zone time of one um, so our entries weren't good our, our breakout wasn't solid when we put pucks in we didn't win the board battles um, to their credit so um, you know six on four we had plenty of opportunity to, to settle it down make some poised plays and get some looks and but we did have some great looks in that six on four. And it just didn't go in. Uh, 
how, uh, in the end, how does this measure up for a season for you? I mean, coming into the season we talked about, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. There's some things you knew about this team, but uh, at the end of the day, what do you think of the, the, how the season went? Ah, it's a tough one. You know, you go on the road and you want to celebrate with the guys and what they've accomplished, but, you know, ending this way doesn't allow that opportunity. So uh, I feel for those guys, they deserve better. I think we know we have the talent of the group, so this one's disappointing. So you had a great season, but um, I think we fell short. Uh, Dante, how did this season go as far as kind of the evolution, you know, maybe what you go into the season expecting for goals, what will make this season a success, and kind of how that changed as you saw what kind of team this was? Um, I mean, you know, I think we just take it day by day. We're, you know, as a team, we build a culture here, a winning culture, and um, <coughs> Gary does a great job of that. And we try to relay that message. And so by building that culture, we just go day by day. And, you know, as our team built into this um, very offensive, skilled team, um, we kind of we started playing to that, that strength and tried to play with pace. And, um, as the se season came along, we started winning games, and um, you know I think you just got to play with what you have as a team, and we did a good job of that uh, right up till the end. And um, you know obviously today we were a little flat, uh, weren't, able, weren't able to uh, get the job done today. So. I would say this season was very rewarding and the fans are very proud of the team and proud to be a pioneer. We all have high hopes for next season to take the team to be the champions. The women's lacrosse team has come out of the gates scorching hot to start the season after an overtime win against Oswego State in the season opener. The girls have handled their following two games to open up the season 3-0. After getting a home victory over the spring break period, the Pioneers will look to secure their second home win of the season on Wednesday and their first in front of a big home crowd. Morrisville will be coming into town looking to knock us off the win streak. The game will be happening right after this show is aired at 4 p.m. After facing off against Morrisville, the women's team will continue their three-game home stand with the second game com coming against RPI this Saturday. The game will be held at 1 p.m. The team is hoping to keep up its strong out-of-conference play before op opening up Empire 8 competition against nationally ranked St. John Fishers. The ladies are just at the beginning of a potentially very successful season, and we should all be excited to see what the year has in store. Next Tuesday, March 29th at 3.30 and 5.30, our women's softball team will have a doubleheader face-off against Morrisville State College here at Greenman softball field. The Pioneers are coming off a win versus Stockton University with a score of 8 to eight over 5. Morrisville will be the last game before entering conference play this season. With a current record of 4 over 6, they look to advance to 6 over 6. Utica University has won the last two matchups between the teams with a score of 5 to nothing and 9 to z excuse me, 5 to 1 and 9 to 0. The Pioneers look to continue their streak. And that's all the Utica sports we have for you this week. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here to stay up to date with everything going on in Utica athletics. Check out our Instagram for even more sports content, from the Moose Minute series to live score updates on our story. And don't forget to fear the moose.